Can our government end the strike already? This brings me to my advocacy, government, ASU, and IPPIS. In the words of the late Chinua Achebe, when a handshake goes beyond the elbow, we know it has already turned to another thing. And I speak on the prolonged fight between government and ASU about migrating university lecturer's salaries onto IPPIS, a government's platform for processing salaries. What comes to my mind anytime I see prolonged fights and delays over subject matters that should deliver public benefit is that some private benefits are the real cause of the fight and not the complexities of delivering the public good. On the matter of IPPIS, government on one side says IPPIS has features that will help weed out ghost workers and payments, thus saving us money. And trust me, a significant amount of that huge personnel cost we see in government expenditure every year are payments to ghosts. ASU, on the other hand, says the nature of its members' remuneration comes with certain peculiarities that were not built into IPPIS, and therefore it cannot work for them. That is a genuine concern. The union said it has its own application that it has been working on. Worthy of mention are some side comments in the public space about the cost by enrollee on the IPPIS and the usual usage and annual charges for applications like this, which could be of beneficial interest to some people on the side of government. On the flip side is a similar story that ASU is resisting simply because if it is his own application that is deployed, then the union will be an integral part of the contracting process. Nigerians understand what that means. Nobody is sure exactly what is going on, but the ding-dong between the parties is beginning to get on everybody's nerves. It is a case of narrow fiddling as Rome burns. Nigerian universities have now been closed for more than half a year. When two parties take two irreconcilable path like this. One approach to make a headway is to bring in an independent mediator that both parties can trust to resolve the problem. My advocacy is that government and NASA should stop wasting our time and simply appoint an independent IT expert to mediate. This could be from any of the big five or non-big five Nigerian firm or firms who are thorough professionals and hold their integrity in high esteem. Arrange an open meeting, involve both parties, the independent IT expert mediator, and other stakeholders, including parents and students. Make available a demo IPPIS with sample lecturer remuneration of various complexities. In that open session, let the samples be processed for everybody to see the output. The mediator will then request ASU to raise all the concerns, and all the concerns as they are being raised the IPPIS team will respond. At this session, the independent experts will be able to determine if IPPIS can handle the lecturer's salary as is, require some back-end modifications which are feasible, or it should be jettisoned so that we can make way for ASU's option to be reviewed in like manner. There may be no need for another meeting after this session. If there is, the independent IT expert mediator can midwife an acceptable solution a maximum of two more meetings. Please, let the government and ASU stop the ding dong. The solution is far easier than we are making it. Nobody needs eight months of meetings to resolve matters of IT platform. Small businesses are making similar decisions effectively every day. There are hmm. a lot of unseen and unheard. Aisha, you want yeah. to quickly zero in before we uh, all steps in? Oh, okay. I, I just said, hmm. The issue is there. It is not that they cannot resolve the issue. First of all, in Nigeria today, I always say the greatest injustice in Nigeria today is that access to good quality education is dependent on the economic status of one's family. ASU is now like NUT, the Nigerian Union of Teachers. <laughs> Nobody cares who are the people in public universities. When the children of who is who were part of those who went to public universities, ASU strikes were taken seriously. 
Thank Today, you. the children are in private universities or mm -hmm. they are abroad. So who really cares? Nobody does. And that is what is happening. And this is what happens when we look away, when things are happening. We've seen first times where NUT will be on strike. It will be over a year. Nobody will bother. ASU didn't know that they would get to that stage. I remember I used to say, it, if ASU doesn't take time, one day they will be like NUT, where nobody will bother and we care about them or what they're doing. We are there right now. And so we're, we must get to, a, to get a Nigeria where the child of nobody can become somebody without knowing anybody. The child of nobody can be treated the same as the child of somebody. The child of the policeman and the child of the president should have equal access to everything in this country. Until we get there, this same problem we keep on happening. Sadly. It's pretty much, thank, thanks Aisha, it's pretty much what you said earlier, Evans, when you yeah. talked about medical tourism. Yeah. You're telling us that uh, money is this budget, this budget, <laughs> but you go out there to treat yourself, yes, and then we have to deal with general hospitals that are not equipped, and we have to deal with doctors who are dis disenfranchised and demotivated and all of that, but you go abroad for even headache. Yeah. It has to be, see... We have a long way to go in this country. Actually. Yeah, um, uh, Bolahan, thanks for for you know oh, throwing more light on uh, yeah. on this because a lot of people. It is easy for people to say, "As when you're at home, it is the children of the poor that will suffer." You know, so go back to school, and so the problem you know becomes a recurring decimal if you know we refuse to solve it, uh, and so you have provided a solution. Bring your own. I bring my own. Let us test it publicly. And see Which where is what the faults Bola are. Is saying now. That's what I'm saying. That's, he has provided a solution. Let us see where the faults are, and then we will take it up from there. But if you now refuse to, you know, do all, so sometimes I wonder when they it's sit wrong. down, when they sit down to negotiate this, uh, do this negotiation. What are they actually negotiating? You don't have um, IT experts in this place, and what you are disputing is an, an IT platform. IT platform. And you know, it, it brings me quickly. It brings me to. What my brother-in-law told me, he works in America, he works in government in America, and he said, look, it's only a Nigerian that governor will come to negotiate a loan, and he doesn't have one expert. But he had so many people with him, but no expert in that feed. <laughs> and then he comes no there, expert. he comes there, he's saying thank you for helping Africa. And meanwhile, that loan that he's taking is not help. The interest on it, ordinarily, if he comes with an expert, he wouldn't need it. <laughs> You know, and then he says, thank you, thank you. He thinks it's free money for him. So it's the same thing here. They sit down and discuss all night, drink tea, eat chicken, and then collect a sitting allowance, and then they go. They say dreadlock. I think, we I think the, problem, the problem is not just the uh, issue of IT experts, ASU, or the federal government. The major problem is the lack of the understanding that education is the ornament of prosperity and refuge in adversity. No, they understand. Now, That's why the yeah, children yeah, are yeah, 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 they, they, un they, they understand. They understand, but they do not know that the deficit in it is the reason people are burning police stations, burning courtrooms, burning all kinds of places, because they, their children are not also safe. That is the truth, and they are not. And that's safe. why they are looking for social. Media yes, so so that's why they want to down. gag up everything as a solution <laughs> instead of providing. Because, like we said earlier on, that these youth, when you keep them at home, they will channel their energy, the energy mental, physical, to any kind of thing they can see, and then you have devices all over the place. So I think that we they should rethink. That's why I say they do not understand fully the import of their actions. We've come to the end of this week's episode of the Advocate. However, the advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com slash The Advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time on this station. Let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye. Bye-bye. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country 
when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.